Hello, welcome Solex Nation. We are back this week, but you know, Dev and Lauren did a really good job filling yes, in. Yes, I think they should fill in more often. Yes, I I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that too. <laughs> so starting April 1st, we are going live with our comp plan upgrades. Do you want to tell them a little bit about what's yeah. going to happen? So let's go through just some dates. Uh, we've talked about Dave Discovery. If you attended that, you got some full detail. We also have all the videos posted on YouTube about the details of these improvements and upgrades to the comp plan, you also can find them in your back office. So if you're a, a QLA, a distributor for Solex, that's where you go and you can find out the details of how you can earn commissions uh, by working with Solex as a distributor here or what we call a QLA, Quantum Living Advocate. Let me just give you some dates on that front. On April 1st, the effects of this improved comp plan go live. They are in place. They are how we will calculate um, any of the benefits that you earn from the compensation plan. Now, there is a bit of a stepping process into how you will see the impact of the improvements of the comp plan. Because March, the month that we're in right now, if you're watching this in the month of March, still is of the prior uh, settings and rules for that compensation plan that will pay out on the 11th of april because that has to pay out on the 11th of april we're going to hold everything in place until the 11th of april meaning what the information you see in the back office that's going to reflect the prior comp plan after the 11th and after that compensation plan for the month of March is paid out on April 11th, then you'll see upgraded changes in the back office with the business snapshot. Also, you're going to see a new widget uh, regarding rank advancement. And we'll, we'll show you that probably next week on the call. Yes. We'll show yeah. you what that looks like. We'll go into more detail. Yeah. But then you're also going to see a couple quick reports in the report center that we've put together that help you manage uh, your understanding of, of who's doing what within your team and your organization. Really so, user-friendly. Yeah, just want to make sure you understand those dates. Everything's going to look like the existing comp plan up through April 11th. Yes. After April 11th, you're going to see some improvements, and we'll go into more details in the coming weeks. So that's fun. Also coming up, we have our virtual event for the Legacy Group, and that is going to be on June 10th. And we will be sending more information out to you as part of the legacy group. If you are in that group, uh, you'll be getting some information from us via email. Um, to be in that group, you just need to own a Solex silver coin. You can buy it, you can earn it, you can win it. Um, however you have a coin, uh, it doesn't matter. But as long as you have one, you're in that group. Yeah, or become really good friends with somebody who has more than one. <laughs> or that, <Right>? or that. <laughs> and, and it starts on the 10th because it's a virtual event. You're going to have a couple days access. We'll leave it open for a couple that. of days. Yeah, so you yeah. don't have to disrupt all of your plans in order to make sure right. that on the 10th at whatever time it rolls, you have to be there. No. But it's not going to be like our Dave Discovery. It's only going to be a couple of hours of content, but really good stuff. We're actually yeah. preparing it now and we're, we love it. We're excited yeah. for it. With some announcements there. Yeah. Speaking of uh, a lot of content, Dave Discovery, uh, we are already talking about the next one. And that one is August 26th and 27th in Lehigh, Utah. You can get your tickets now. They're in the back office. Um, we do have limited seating at that one. So yep. once, there, once it's full, we're going to turn those ticket sales off. Um, there will be no virtual access to that. So if you want to come buy your tickets, now. Yeah, the venue is here in Utah. Yes. If you have been around for a while, this this is at the Red Show Barn, as it's called, uh, where we had a live day of discovery last September. Yes. And so we're going to do that same location, great venue. We had a blast with everybody that came, and so hopefully you can make plans and and have access to to come join us there. We're looking forward to that. Um, okay, a couple weeks ago, we gave Alpha 3 passes away to everybody who made a comment on our video. We gave away a lot we of We gave Alpha away so passes. many. It was so fun to see your comments yeah. and to give those passes away. Um, we just want to show you a quick little video that we put together um, as a shareable. Now, um, we are going to have this in the email um, that is sent out to somebody when, when you send them an Alpha 3 pass. Mm -hmm. This video will be in that email. Um, it's not there yet, so until then, we are going to give you this video on YouTube as a shareable. So if you send an Alpha 3 pass to somebody, make sure you also send them a link to this video. 
Um, so let's go ahead and watch it now. Congratulations, you have received an Alpha 3 pass. You now have complete access to the AO scan technology for 72 hours. You have the option to access this program on both your phone and computer. But for this demonstration, we will highlight the phone option. Let's get you started. Open the email containing your AO Scan Alpha 3 Pass invitation. At the bottom of this email, click the Get Started Now button. You are now at the AO Scan Alpha 3 Pass login screen, which is auto filled with your name and email address. Click the green sign in button. Next, click the Guest Client tab and then Create New Client. This is how you will create your own unique profile and how the scanner will identify you. Enter your name, email, gender, weight, and height. A picture is helpful, but not crucial to your profile signature and is optional. You are ready to scan. Remember, you have access to every part of the AO scan technology for a full 72 hours. You can scan yourself, your kids, your parents, your grandparents, your friends, your dogs, cats, horses, you get the picture. Because we don't save any information, please make sure you email the reports to yourself after each scan. We hope you love your experience with the incredible AO scan technology. What happens if I don't accept the pass within 10 days of it being shared with me? The pass will be returned to the person who sent it to you. If my pass expires, can I get it back? Please refer to the person who shared the Alpha 3 pass with you. Do I get to keep my newly created profile if I choose to add a monthly subscription to AOScan Technology after my three-day pass expires? Yes, your data will transfer with you. Can I sign in with multiple devices? You can use multiple devices with this pass, but you can only be signed in to one device at a time. If you have further questions, please contact the person who shared this amazing technology with you. That video is so great for somebody who's never been in this environment and just needs a little help knowing how to set their account up. Yeah, so make sure you do share that. That's it's really important, I think, for their experience. And we've you've asked for this, and so this is why we put it together. Yes. Share it as you share the Apple Three Pass with someone. Send that video. Send that it. video out. Um, okay, so I'm gonna now talk about somebody who is getting a legacy coin today. Mm -hmm. And she is getting a, a legacy coin because she got a... License plate! Yay! We love the <laughs> license plates! So take a look at this. This is Mary Roy. We love it, Mary. Yes, great job. So fun. And remember, we do get questions about this. Uh, to, to get your license plate, go to your local DMV. We don't sell them here through Solex. It is, yeah. it is issued through your DMV. All right, let's talk about top and rollers. Um, we have some new names on this list. We do. Uh, yeah, in fact, I almost think all of them are new. They feel like they're all new. Yeah. Right? So this is for the week of March 21st through the 27th. Now we do have a tie for second place. Uh, of course of we course have a we tie do. for second place. The first one is Belinda Billinghurst. And then the second one is Trina McKinley. Congratulations, both of you. Well done. Yes. Congratulations, Belinda and Trina. And Speak, drum roll for well, the... Speaking of Solex Silver Coins, yes. we're going to give one to this, this person. But guess what? This top and roller is getting a silver coin and probably has no idea what the legacy group is because he <laughs> yeah. signed up on March 1st. Yeah, he's just rolling. He just came in and said, hey, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Sign up on March 1st. And his name is... Kevin Shabo. Right? If we said, hopefully we said that right. Kevin Shabo, congratulations. You are our top enroller. Welcome to Solex. <laughs> welcome to the Legacy <laughs> Club. We'll see you in June. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> right, that's right. Um, okay, now last thing before we get to our call. We had another contest last week. Now Deb and Lauren, they said they're gonna give away three, three. sets of the LightWave glasses. Yes. Um, and so you sent in your um, comments on our yep. YouTube channel on our last week's call mm -hmm. and you said, other than the scanner, how do you um, manage, emotions, manage your emotional right? stress or yeah. manage your yeah. when you're when you're not feeling so great? Yeah, when, when emotions are kind of out of whack, what do you do to get them settled yes. and, and calm and balanced? Right, as we use 
inner voice, the balancing harmonics. Again, you couldn't use the scanner as one of your tools. We had several people say, well, if I can't use the scanner, I guess I'll say something else. Yes, so. Which we love <laughs> yes, the, we those that. answers, of course. So let's draw three. Okay. We have a lot of names in here. Yep. So I'm going to mix it up. Do you want to draw first? Okay, I'll draw first. We'll read, we'll read your suggestions. Here we go. Okay, Raw Candy Bar. This is Rock Candy Bar. Rock Candy Bar, you're going to have to tell us who you are by name unless you are in our back office as Rock Candy Bar. Right. Then we'll find you. Yes. But if we can't find you there. So she, uh, he or she writes, when I'm working on my emotions, I go into meditation. I put myself as the observer and look at the situation and see how I can best respond to the situation. Instead of letting my emotions take over, I use them to gauge to see what I need to adjust. Thank you for these videos. They're very helpful. Well, Raw Candy Bar, I think a Raw Candy Bar is a fantastic way of dealing with your emotions. I know many won't agree <laughs> with that, but I would. But meditation, and we said several people use meditation. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I use meditation to mm -hmm. deal with my emotions and to get the right mindset, whether going into the day or dealing with a specific part of the day. Mm -hmm. Great job. Great, great. All right, your turn. All right. Amanda Hagler, taking a deep breath, isolating to nature, walking in the woods or sitting in grass under a tree, being mm. more mindful, removing myself from a situation. I love that one. And if it's really bad, going to sleep, LOL. I like that one too. <laughs> that was, that's a good one. That is a good one. I agree with all of those suggestions. <laughs> yeah, you got wonderful. I love that. Okay. Last, Last one, one for light wave glasses. Okay, let's do this. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Beck McQuilty, one word, <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> okay. okay, that had some pixie dust on it. That, <laughs> <laughs> that is close to my heart, okay? Close to my heart, Disneyland. If I had to deal with some rough emotions or anything like that, I'm going to Disneyland now. I think we should just go to Disneyland now. Let's just go. Yeah, we should That's just a great plan. do our, our Dave Discovery at Disneyland. <laughs> That too. Okay. Good well, job. Congratulations, to all everyone. All three of you. We will send yep. you all lightwave glasses. And now let's move on to our call. We have a great one today. We're going to hear from both uh, Dr. Tucker and uh, Deborah the, Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, we have some great guests. They're back. They're you back. You guys love them. We love them too. So we'll let's jump into them. those. Hello, everyone. We have a special guest. You've seen him before, and he's on the call with us here all the way from across the country, for us anyways. Dr. Pat Tucker, thanks for being here. Glad you're on the call with us. Thank, thank you for inviting me. I always love being on with you guys. Yeah, it is a special time for us whenever we can steal some of your time to, you know, you can distill some of that expertise that you have in, in so many areas of professional medicine, but even just your life experience overall. Um, we love it every time. Dave Discovery, you hit a home run. Thanks for being uh, on it with us. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. Now we're going to jump in and just take a few minutes or, or the next little bit to, to talk about an area that I think just about everybody listening on this call and viewing this has had some experience, whether they realize it or not. And it has to do with the, the big umbrella concept of inflammation. And I know that you're an expert, obviously, in medicine alone, you've had decades and decades of experience in dealing uh, with either the post effects or, or the, the current effects of inflammation on different bodies. And you've had your own experiences with inflammation. Um, this is something I think would be a great starting point as we dive deeper into helping people understand what is going on in this body that, that we need to figure out how to do better with, right? Absolutely. So how would you frame inflammation? What would, if you were just to kind of give me your responses, what inflammation is and, and, and the starting point? You know, inflammation is your body's response to something abnormal. So if, if you get a pinprick on your finger and your body uh, sees those bacteria that were on that pin, they're going to immediately start reacting. 
and and to use uh, something that's going on right now, it was the Ukrainians reacting when the Russians came over their border. Mm. Okay, yeah, great example. They were they were pretty inflamed. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. exactly right. And and so it, it's like a, it, it's that natural response is actually a, a an intentional positive response to a negative impact. Absolutely. So the body it is, is meant is, to be positive. Yes. Okay. It's meant to protect your body. Yes. But many many times it overreacts, and then when it overreacts is typically when we when we run into disease states. Mm. So the overreacting obviously is is the challenge that that if we're experiencing you know pain or. We're experiencing, uh, we can see it, maybe it's a redness or something to that, like the, the pinprick, uh, things like that. What is that overreaction? How would you, how do you view that, that overreaction where it just kind of gets out of whack, doesn't stay within the boundaries it was intended for? When that happens, uh, sometimes it's normal and your body has to react uh with an equal response to whatever the insult is mm. um so if you have pneumonia then your body's immune system is going to throw out a pretty significant immune response or you won't it won't be able to overcome the pneumonia that bacterial infection but there are times that your body over responds to a a minor effect. So, so even if even if you had a a let's let's the the, the cut effect or the pin prick, um, it's not no no one should be alarmed if they see redness around that area because that's the body taking care of the situation. It's the the white blood cells coming to the rescue, sort of speak, that causes the, the the that appearance of inflammation and actual inflammation. But if on something as simple as a pinprick, if that was still there months later, then we're concerned that maybe there was something else going on. Right. Yeah. So you, the idea is don't be alarmed by normal life events inflammation, but there is a concern to say, okay, wait, if it's common for the body to get out of whack with inflammation, what does that look like? What does it look like when the body starts to be overrun with inflammation? Frequently, the cause of that, um, Kai, is, is your body's, we call it autoimmune illness. And it's where your own body turns against itself. And that's where we really see high levels of inflammation that don't that won't don't seem to stop. That what? typically, yeah. Go ahead. go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. That, that, that typically will start in the gut. And over the last several years, we have learned that. Well, let me go back. Let me step back one step and say. For a long time, we had really not, I hate to say not a clue, but that's pretty close to what it was, of the reason that people developed autoimmune illness. And it's your body attacking itself. And we found out several years ago that the gut and the quality of the bacteria in the gut and what they do, whether they're good bacteria or bad bacteria, what type of chemicals they make, whether they're toxins or whether they're good chemicals that actually help your body. We're, our gut is designed to have good bacteria in it that help our bodies process food um, and keep us healthy. But as soon as that population of bacteria for and there are a lot of different reasons, but are replaced with the bad bacteria that don't good that don't do the good things for our body and only do bad things like either make us sick, cause inflammation, um, 
uh, release toxins when they break down things, that's when we start developing the autoimmune illness. That is, um, is what do you do? What is the, um, what's the effort to, to obviously one, recognize that you're in that state? And then how, how do you deal with that? Or how would you deal with that if you were in that state? Well, I've been in that state, not necessarily being diagnosed with an autoimmune illness, um, but getting up in the morning at 55 and your ankles hurt and your knees hurt and your face is swollen and your back hurts and you don't feel good and you're fatigued and you don't have any energy. All those things are the results of inflammation. And I started studying functional medicine back in the fall of 2019. And the first thing I learned about was the inflammation that comes from a bad set of bacteria or a bad microbiome in your gut. Mm. That bacteria, uh, it, it creates, the, the long-term effect is something called leaky gut which allows small particles to get in through the gut wall and into your, into your vascular system where your body is going to see it and start reacting. And for me, that happened. I learned about the elimination diet and they told us, well, you know, you need to go and do the elimination diet, which gets rid of basically the 10 most common different food allergens so that you will know what it's like when you tell a patient you need to do the elimination diet. And for a month, you take out these 10 most common food allergens, which it's a lot of stuff. Sugar's one. So you can imagine how broad that is in, in so many things you eat and so many, especially processed foods that have sugar in them. Uh, but there are, there are 10, there are nuts and, and sugar and dairy and gluten and alcohol and caffeine and corn and soy. So there, there are several, but when you go through that diet and you take those out of your, out of what you eat for 30 days, I, I, I told my my wife, my wife got me into all this. I told my wife, I've got a gut of steel. I can eat anything. I don't have food allergies, sensitivities, none of that stuff. So, but when I went through the elimination diet, I figured out really quickly, three weeks in, I felt so good. My brain was clear. I didn't have brain fog. I wasn't getting up in the mornings with my ankles, knees, back hurting. I had energy. I popped right out of bed. And so I realized, okay, this isn't because I'm 55. You know, I, 55 has not done this to me. A bad diet has done this to me. So when I started, at, after that 30 days, you start adding one back in at a time every three days to see if your body reacts. And I reacted to gluten, but then more significantly to dairy. So when I eat dairy now, and I cheated a couple of days ago, had some friends, we went to a little, a little ice cream diner uh, when we were going to a baseball game, uh, had a foot long corn dog and a milkshake. <laughs> and it Shut was up. great at the time. <laughs> But the next day and two days later, I wake up, my face is swollen, my eyes are swollen like I've had an allergy attack. I'm sinusy, my sinuses are all congested. I snore at night, which my wife severely complained about. <laughs> um, I, didn't, I didn't wheeze this time, but I have wheezed before after eating dairy. Um, I wake up, get out of bed, I'm fatigued, my, my ankles hurt, my knees hurt, my back hurts. And it really takes, you know, three, four days to kind of get out of that and get it out of your system. So obviously my uh, leaky gut is not completely healed yet, 
Uh, but that's the goal. The goal is to change the microbiome in your gut from an unhealthy one to a, a healthy one that actually allows your gut to heal so that you don't have leaky gut anymore. And then maybe you can get back to eating gluten or dairy or whatever your, uh, your uh, food sensitivity was. So uh, it actually but, leads to a, to a point where that might be, there's a healing process in that. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And so with my gut, um, I had to dramatically change my diet. And so, like I said, you've got the good bacteria and you've got the bad bacteria. Well, which one do you think prosper in your gut? Or what do you think controls whether one or the other prospers? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, I think that if you have the bad bacteria, that's going to have a significant impact. You're going to feel that right away. Well, it, so what what decides whether the good bacteria grow or the bad bacteria grow is what you feed it. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, so, and this is the crazy thing. You know, if you go to McDonald's every day, if you're drinking milkshakes and drinking a lot of pop and all that kind of stuff, we call everything Coke in Mississippi. You drink a lot of Coke and you're feeding the bad bacteria, all the processed food, you're feeding the bad bacteria. If you eat greens, high fiber stuff, the phytonutrients, which are all the, you know, all the colorful fr uh, fruits and vegetables, you know, the red peppers and the yellow peppers and the rhubarb and the, uh, and the beets and all those uh, different things, you're feeding the good bacteria. So when you have a, what e a pretty much everybody knows is a bad diet, um, uh, and, and that would be basically most of our Western diets when we don't take the time to prepare our own food. We go out to eat a lot, a lot of processed food. You're feeding the back bacteria and you're causing your gut to lean towards an unhealthy gut. So if we eat the good stuff, we're not only helping to heal our gut to stop that inflammatory process, um, but we're getting healthier as we do it. Uh, we're feeding the good bacteria. Often the, the gut is, is referred to as the second brain, right? It's, there's this Absolutely. neurological connection between what's going on in the gut and then what's actually going on in the head. Um, do you believe or do you think or do you know that there's a connection uh, that what you feed your gut can drive how you feel as far as your appearance, your emotions. Are those tied? Are those connected in any way? That obviously leads to the cycle of inflammation within the body. Absolutely. That's an awesome question. And it really, it is called the second brain. So, and this is for years as a doctor, I thought there was Basically, there was either good bacteria in your gut, which kind of were there just kind of as placeholders, you know, so that the bad bacteria wouldn't have a place to hook in, or there was bad bacteria that was making you sick. Um, and that is somewhat the case, but I think what we are learning more and more about is bacteria have DNA, and that DNA codes for different chemicals and all that stuff. So basically, when you have the good bacteria in your gut, it's producing chemicals that make you healthier. I mean, they, they don't just do nothing. Mm -hmm. They're not just a placeholder. They actually participate in your health. And that's brain health. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a good set of bacteria, that suppresses the inflammatory reaction. It helps for you to have higher dopamine levels in your head, uh, higher serotonin levels in your head. Both of those have everything to do with energy, depression, anxiety. So when, if you don't have those good bacteria or if you've got a lot of the bad bacteria, it, it suppresses the production of serotonin 
uh, dopamine and all the good brain chemicals that give you that clarity of thought. All right, you all know who I'm with here, Deborah Bruce. You did a fantastic job at Dave Discovery, and we had so many, so many comments come in and just, you all love Deborah Bruce. In fact, I know this will be a highly attended call because Deborah Bruce is here. <laughs> okay. All right. Now that, I, now that I have that to live up to. <laughs> okay, no pressure at all. Just have a couple questions. Okay. <laughs> all right, these are from our uh, Facebook group. So we okay. just grabbed two that we thought would be good ones for you. The first one says, I've had skin elasticity come up with eights the past four days. Not sure what to put into the Cephi. I added quantum homeopathics, beach, and I see under quantum frequency, skin problems number one and skin problems number two. Completely clueless about what these are for. Any suggestions of what to add for skin elasticity? Okay. I remember Lauren talking about this in a previous call and you could run uh, skin one and skin two in a playlist. However, I remember he specifically recommended that you run skin one uh, for a few days and see if you see improvement on your scanner uh, as the frequencies are being applied to the skin. And then you run skin two and uh, see if you see improvement from that. Other uh, practical suggestions are to look in your, at your toxicities that are listed, uh, check your, both your comprehensive and your vitals uh, for that. Look in your body systems and see if there are a lot of recommendations for dehydration. If you're dehydrated, then your skin is, is going to suffer. It depends on really good uh, hydration in order to work. Uh, another thing that can be done is uh, collagen often works well for the skin. However, you want to make sure it's a, it's a very high quality collagen, preferably a peptide collagen, and it doesn't work properly unless you have vitamin C as a precursor in order for it to work. Another thing that could be in the body that you could check on your scanner um, with toxicities is that we might as well all accept that anymore in this society, we are toxic. Some of us are very toxic, some of us are mildly toxic but we are toxic and so we have to really pay attention to that. Here again, hydration is vital for that, but I was uh, talking to Shelby earlier about when I was a little girl, um, my dad would take me to the hardware store. I think it was called Aubuchon's, but we would walk in and there would always be this gentleman there that had a, an apron on that had a lot of pockets and it's usually slightly some slightly gray hair and we would walk in and he would say, Bob, Debra, how are you today? And then he would escort us to whatever aisle we needed, um, whether it was 10 penny nails or whatever my dad was working on. And um, he was very efficient at finding what we needed and taking care of us as customers. Now you might wonder where I'm going with this. That's how it used to be with your body for toxins. It used to have some toxins come in when you were younger or especially decades ago, a number of decades ago, the amount of toxins was a lot smaller than now. Your poor body now, it would be as if you went into Best Buy uh, on Black Friday and expected a salesperson to come up personally and handle your needs. The body is inundated with so many toxins anymore that it's, it's almost impossible for it to cope with it unless you personally pay a lot of attention to your hydration, to all the references in your scanner uh, for what toxicities there might be, and then you just have to remember that your skin is, is the, as the largest organ, is an escape hatch for those toxins. So unless you're supporting it with everything it needs, it's gonna be more difficult for your body to have those escapes. So that may be a background theme that's playing um, that might be why you are seeing the numbers you're seeing. Maybe over the last week you were exposed to some toxins. Think back about what happened in the last week. Maybe you need to assist your body a little bit with that. As always, a great answer, and I love how you're um, saying use the scanner for information and use Cephes to help, but yes. assist, do other things. Make sure that your, your, your scanner and what you find in your body systems, in your the support in your Cephe, in your comprehensive with your ones and nines for lack of function or inflammation, 
all of those things are information that allow you to take the information and like a hand in a glove, apply the lifestyle changes that make it where your scanner makes your frequencies for your health elevate higher and higher because of the application of the two, the consistency and the regular use. Because you're not going to change your skin just by running frequencies? No. But it assists you? Yes. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Next question. How does a scanner help with sleep and also getting out of fight or flight state? I've tried lots of things, but do not notice a difference. How does it work so well for so many, but I don't notice anything? Here again, um, your scanner is not a one size fits all, okay? You are a unique human being and you have so much going on in your body. Uh, I know Lawrence talked about this again, where um, you can run all of the different applications um, in your Cephi for sleep as a playlist, and you can let them play all night long. But one of the important things that he has mentioned has been that you want to put it on, but you want to set it in another room. It's not something where you want to just run it and have it right next to your head because um, as we've been advised, having electronics in the bedroom, even a TV can at times interfere with sleep. Mm -hmm. So it might be the proximity of where you have your scanner when you're trying to improve your sleep. The other thing that you can pay attention to is um, your adrenals in your scanner. Pay attention to whether your, your uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine is out of balance. See if your neurotransmitters are having um, some imbalances in them. The other thing that's key with that, and we'll go into this a lot more in phase two, is that there is such an interrelation between the gut and the brain, and one of the things that really gets affected by that is your sleep. Uh, there's approximately a hundred neurotransmitters that have been identified so far, and about 40 of them are produced in the gut. And that is just so, so important to take care of your gut uh, serotonin is one of the ones that's primarily um, in the gut and there's so many of those neurotransmitters that can um, assist with or interfere with your ability to sleep so you might pay attention and really take a look at the adrenals and gut health as well as always <laughs> wealth of information thank you so much oh you're welcome pleasure to be here we're gonna have Deb on again next week so make sure you tune in for that weekly update all right Well, Kai, it's been a great call today. It's it always good to hear from Deborah, and, and Tucker was with us today, too, yes, wasn't he? Yes, yes, and awesome. we're going to have a part two with Tucker. He's going to come oh, back wow. and share some more. That's awesome. Yeah, great information, though. Those two, their expertise is so, Amazing. so invaluable, yep. right? Yep, really is. And I think most people enjoy it. Yep. Okay. Got to give up? away something. Yep. Got to give away. We, we, we've made it. We're committed to giving away stuff every week it seems like <laughs> we do and so and we're always going for like a new level I, I don't know if we're going to run out of levels but we have an event coming up we have the legacy group coming up in june yes the legacy june. virtual event so what if we you know, maybe open the door a little wider to that event and okay. have a few more people attend good okay i like this okay so every week we give to the top and roller the solix silver coin that's right what if this week, since we're rolling into April, we're rolling into some improvements in the comp plan, yep, yep. people are recruiting. Okay, so we're going to go and give it to both first and second. Okay, what if there's okay. a tie? They get it. They get it. Okay, first and second place, ties are in. First and second place, get the Solix Ever coin. You get to come to the event. You're part of the Legacy Group forever. And so here we go. Let's run yep. with that. You got it. Okay, see ya. See ya. What I got? We'll just record a segment. Of course, I got Shelby here. Okay. So that we don't say anything silly. Always. Uh, always. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are we starting with? Skin. <laughs> I need more sleep. <laughs> There's a playlist for that. Yes.